Good morning, class. How are you all? Welcome to another beautiful week in the series of our class and lecture on Genesis 204. That is Introduction to Entrepreneurship Skills. Once again, my name is Abayomi Ade in Kabada from the College of Agricultural Sciences, Yewa Campus Ayeturu. In the last two classes, we were able to treat crop production enterprise and um, we were able to successfully round off with that aspect last week. I thereafter said that we will be talking on sandal making and leather slippers making enterprise. And on completion of this study session, this study session, students should be able to define clearly what a sandal is or what leather slippers is as well as shoe making and as well should be able to define lasting process and what a footwear is having said that at the end of the class Students should be able to identify shoe parts, identify shoe eels, and be used to terminologies that are in use in leather slippers, sandal, and shoe making enterprises. Finally, students should be able to ascertain how shoes are made and how styles are made inclusive of pattern making through manual process, machine process, or computer-aided patterning. Sandal making, shoe making. Sandal making is the process of creating footwear either by hand or machine. It should be noted that formerly sandals and shoes were made one at a time by hand, that is, manually. Old fashioned handicraft of shoemaking has not been largely superseded in volume of shoes that are produced through industrial mass production of footwear but not necessarily in quality, attention to detail, or craftsmanship. Once again, shoe making, sandal making, or, slip, or leather slippers making is the process of creating footwear, either by hand or through the use of machines. Shoe makers also known as cord winners. Yes, shoemakers are also known as cord winners. May produce a range of footwear items, including shoes, boots, sandals, clogs, and moccasins. Please, students, I want us to pay attention to this. I said shoemakers, also known as cord winners. Cord winners, cord, C O R D W A I N E R S, as cord winners, may produce a range of footwear items, such as the footwear item, what is the footwear? Different materials that are worn on the shoe. And this includes shoes, boots, sandals, clogs, and moccasins. Such items are generally made of leather, wood, rubber, plastic, jute, or other plant materials, and often consist of multiple parts 
for better durability of the soul. For better durability of the soul, stage to the upper. It is imperative to differentiate between cord winners and cord winners. Cord winners are those who produce shoes, leather slippers, or sandals. While cobblers are those who mend or repair produced shoes. Cord winners or shoemakers produce a range of shoes, while cobblers are those who repair shoes. Historically, shoemaking has been a handicraft limited to time-consuming production by hand. The production of wooden shoes was widespread in medieval Europe. They were made from a single piece of wood, roughly cut into shoe form. A variant of this form was the clog. Yes, there used to be a, there used to be a footwear called clog, C L O G. That's a, a variant of what people used to wear in those days. Clogs have wooden soles to which a leather upper was attached. The sole and heel were made from one piece of maple or hash, which would be two inches thick and a little longer or broader than the desired size of a shoe. The half outer side of the sole and heel was fashioned there with a long chisel edge implement called clogger's knife. Yes, the chisel edge implements used in those days in the making of clog was called clogger's knife or stock, while a second implement called the groover made a groove around the side of the sole. It will make a groove. And what do you mean by groove? It is the it is it makes it look like a heel, a groove, you know, something like a hole, so to speak. However, by the sixteen hundreds, leather sole came in two main types, and we have them called torn shoes of one thin flexible sole which was sold to the upper. This type was used for making slippers and similar shoes. The second type united or unites the upper with an insole which was subsequently attached to an outsole with raised heel. This was the main variety and was used for most footwear including standard shoes and riding boots. The traditional shoemaker will measure the feet and cut out upper leathers according to the required size. These parts were fitted and stitched together. The sole was next assembled, consisting of a pair of inner shoes of soft leather, a pair of outer soles of farmer texture, a pair of welts or bands about one inch broad of flexible leather. The insole was then attached to a last made of wood which was used to form the shoe. Last and lasting process. The lasting procedure or process secures the leather upper to the sole with tacks. When we say tacks, these are small nail-like objects that are used to attach the leather to the sole. The soles were then hammered into shape. The heel lifts, the heel lifts will then be attached with wooden pegs. That is precisely what is referred to as lasting process. And I said the lasting process secures the leather upper to the sole with tacks.
tax t a c k s the souls were then hammered into shape and the ill lifts were then attached with wooden pegs from here we go on to finishing operation in sandal and shoemaking the term finishing involves pairing rasping strapping smoothing blacking and burnishing of the edges of soles and ears strapping and sandpapering and burnishing the soles with drawing the last and cleaning out any pegs which may have pierced through the inner sole. Shoe making became more commercialized in the mid 18th century as it expanded as a cottage industry. Large warehouses began to stock footwear in warehouses and these shoes were made by small manufacturers from the area. Old fashioned shoemakers still exist today, especially in poorer parts of the world, and they create custom built shoes. Generally, the modern machinery used in shoemaking included die cutting tools to cut the shapes and grommet machines to punch holes for lacing. Famous from there, we go to the next subject and we will be talking about famous shoemakers and their origin. Number one, Raymond Lewis, Will Smith. These shoemakers invented the lover design of shoes. Number two, Hans Sachs, H-A-N-S. S A C H S and Sax, a German poet who is also an inventor of shoes. Another person, number three, is Salvatore Capezio, the founder and manufacturer of dance shoes. Salvatore Capezio, an Italian. Number four, Salvatore Ferragamo an Italian shoe designer. Number five, Jimmy Koo. Jimmy Koo, a Malaysian Chinese fashion designer who is based in London. Number six, of the famous shoemakers and their origin, is Christian Louboutin. Christian Louboutin is a French footwear designer. Number seven, Daniel Day Lewis. Daniel Day Lewis is an actor who was also an apprentice shoemaker and designer. Having spoken about famous shoemakers and their origin, it is very, very necessary for us to talk and discuss what footwear is. What is a footwear? Please, this is different from sandal or shoe making that was earlier described. We are now trying to describe what a footwear is. The footwear can be defined as garments that are worn on the feet. Their main purpose is to protect the feet. Full stop. Presently, footwear has become a vital component of fashion accessories. Although their basic purpose remains that of protection, adornment, or defining style statements, has become their additional and a significant function. 
There are many types of footwear. And these include shoes, boots, sandals, slippers, clogs, as well as moccasins. Types of shoes. 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 There are 10 different types of shoes. And they are divided into these types based on the categories that we have. And these include the following. Number one, athletic shoes. And when we say athletic shoes, they include sneakers and galoshes. Number two, high heel shoes. Number three, stiletto heel shoes. Number four, kitten heel shoes. Kitten, K I W T E N. Number five, lace up shoes. Number six, high top shoes. Number seven, loafers. Number eight, platform shoes. Number nine, spikes, and number ten, school shoes, and many others. Shoemaking can be considered a traditional handicap, handicraft profession. However, traditional handicraft shoemaking has been largely taken over by industrial manufacturing of footwear. Dogs. With the development of modern technology, a pair of shoes can be made in far less time as each step in the process is generally performed by a separate footwear making machine. Class, we have spoken about what footwear is, and I said that footwear can be defined as garments that are worn on the feet. And I said the main purpose of the footwear is to protect the feet. However, footwear have become a vital component of our fashion accessories in every part of the world. And although the basic purpose is that of protection, footwears now have the purposes of adornment or the purpose of divining style through making statement with your shoe or footwear and they have also become a very very important of our dressing important part of our dressing i also mentioned earlier that there are many types of footwear which include shoes, sandals, slippers, clogs, as well as moccasins. I also said that there are 10 types of shoes, ranging from the first one that is known as athletic shoes, worn by sports people, which are known as sneakers or galoshes, high heel shoes, the second, number three, stiletto shoes, stiletto heel shoes, number four, kitten heel shoes, number five, lace up shoes, number six, high top shoes, number seven, loafers, number eight, platform shoes, number nine, spikes, and number ten, school shoes. And I said, shoemaking can be considered as a traditional handicraft and craft profession. And that, however, traditional handcraft shoemaking has been likely overtaken by industrial manufacturing of footwear. Thus, the development of modern technology 
Thus, with the development of modern technology, a pair of shoes can be made in far less time as each step in the process is generally performed by a separate footwear making machine. Having said this, we quickly move on to the aspect that has to do with identification. Identification of sandal and shoe parts. Before explaining the shoe making process, it is necessary to identify the different parts of a shoe or sandal and or leather slippers. And I have here with me a, a, a shoe and a slippers with which to take us through this aspect. The bottom of the shoe is called the sole. The bottom. This part of the shoe is the bottom. The part that has contact with the soil is called the sole. However, the insole, insole, insole is the interior, interior. This part where the, the pen is touching, the barrel is touching. Insole is there. Interior bottom if we, or in, interior bottom of a shoe, which sits directly beneath the foot. When you place your foot inside this place, the part that your foot is touching is called the insole. Outsole. The layer of the sole that is in direct contact with the ground. This is in direct contact with the ground. It is called outsole. This is called in sole. This is called in sole. This is called out sole. Now, the heel, H E E L, the heel, the heel, the raised part, the raised part, you can see it is raised. This part, this part, you can see the raised part, the raised part under a boot or shoe. Supporting the same part of the human foot is called heel. Now, having said that, it also had has a mid sole, mid sole. The layer that lies between the outsole, the mid sole is here. The other is the outsole. This is the mid sole. This tiny layer between this leather upper and the outsole in between is the mid sole that is the mid sole then apart from that we have the vamp the vamp is the section which covers the sides of the foot which covers the side of the foot the lacing which covers the ankle and the instep this is the vamp vamp here vamp here i'm holding the vamp trust that you can see that i'm holding the vamp that is the valve. Then we go to the another part of the shoe that is called the shank. The part of the sole of the shoe between the heel and the ball. You see, the ball is here. The ball is here. The ball, that part is called the shank. The part of the sole between the heel and the ball. Is called the shank. So you have seen the shank here. This part here. This is the heel. The shank is here. The ball is here. The ball is where the half of your foot. When you say the half of your foot, the part that curves. Mid, mid, the middle of your of your foot that curves is the is is the place that I refer to as the ball. So this this raised part, okay, the part of the sole between the heel and the ball is called the shank. Now, apart from that, you have the throat of the vamp. What is the throat of the of the vamp? The part which curves around the lower edge of the top, where the lacing starts. Okay. This is the throat of the vamp. This part 
Let me raise this part up. This the lesson starts from here. Lesson starts from here. When you want to lace it, you start with the eyelets. These two holes, these holes that are here, the holes on your shoe, where you put your lace, is called eyelet. So the throat is there. The throat of the vamp is here. This is the vamp. This is the vamp. This part here and this part, where this thing starts, where this lace starts, when you close it, you can see it. Once I close it, it looks like the throat. This part, this part here, is the throat of the vamp. The throat of the of the vamp. Having said that, the next one is the back stay. Back stay. This term is used to denote a strip of leather covering and straightening the back the back seat of the shoe. You can see the back stay. You can see that's where I'm touching. That place on the shoe is called the back stay. Now, apart from that, there's another place that is called the quarter. 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 This term is mostly used in low shoes to denote the rear part of the upper when a full valve is not in use. The rear part of the upper. This is the upper. When you say the rear part of it, the base. The base of the upper. The rear part of it, and that is the quarter. This is the leg quarter. The, the quarter is here. The rear part of the upper. This is the upper. You see this shoe, this shoe divided into two. You have the upper, you have the sole. The sole, whether the outsole or midsole, and the heel, the complete part, the sole. The upper is comprising of the toe, the vamp, the um, throat of the vamp, and the back stick. All of these are the upper. All of these are the upper. So you have the upper. Then the next one is the tip. Where's your shoe tip? The, 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 toe, the toe piece of a shoe stitched to the vamp and outside of it, this is the vamp. This is the toe. This is the toe of your shoe. This is the vamp of your shoe. Vamp here, toe here. Vamp here, toe here. So this is also called the, the, the tip. The shoe tip. It's called the shoe tip. T-I-P. The next one is lace stay. Lace stay. This is a term that is used to denote a strip of leather reinforcing the eyelet holes. Eyelet holes. These are eyelet holes. These holes are called eyelets. The eyelet. E-Y-E-L-E-T. The, the hole through which your lace pass are called eyelets are called eyelets so and they are the place they, they, this this for instance is five they are five here so it is called the lace state because that is where the lace will grip firmly to make the shoe fitting to your foot or fit as the case might be the next one is the tongue the tongue a narrow strip of leather used on all lace shoes to protect the instep from lacing and weather. This is the tongue. This is the tongue. This is the tongue. You can see it. Like human tongue. This is the tongue. The one I'm pressing out. You have it in your shoes. Those of you who have lace shoes, that is the tongue I'm holding. I'm describing to you here. That is the tongue. It is the tongue of the shoe. It is the narrow strip of leather used on all lace shoes to protect the instep. The instep is the top of your, of your foot that should be protected from lace so that the lace does not injure you. Then having said that, the next one is the overlay. Overlay. What is overlay? It is the term that applied to leather attached to the upper parts of the van of the slippers. Look at this part now. You can see, you can see it. You can see the vamp. The vamp is here. This is the overlay. Look at this. Look at the look at the sewing. The sewing of the overlay to the vamp. 
That is what you call overlay. Then what the next one is the breast, the breast of the shoe. And the breast of the shoe is the inner part of the heel. That is the section nearest to the shank. I told you the inner part of it and you see if you put your foot here it's bouncing it's succulent it's soft and it is called the breast the breast of the shoe so when you put your foot on it your heel rests on that part that is bouncing to give you adequate comfort when you are wearing your shoe finally foxing 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 f o x i n g what is foxing it is the name that applied to leather of the upper that extends from the sole to the laces in front and it is often cut down to the shank in circular form. If in two pieces, the part covering the counter is called heel fox. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Now, I also will let you know that this is a lace. This is what is called lace. And if you look carefully at this, this lace has this um, rubber or synthetic rubber hands. And this synthetic rubber hands on the lace of your shoe is called aglet. A G L E T. Aglet. It's called aglet. And it makes it easier for our lace. To go through the eyelets. Don't forget that I told you that eyelets are the holes through which the lace must pass. Eyelet. This is an eyelet. I'm sure you have seen it. The the aglet has passed through the eyelet now. Aglet passing through the eyelet. This is the aglet, making it easy for the lace to pass through the eyelet. This is an aglet. This is the aglet. Making it easy for the lace to pass through this and the job is done. I hope we are, we are following. Having said that, having said that, we will still talk now immediately about parts of a shoe. Parts of a shoe. And I'm able to tell us that um, there are six major parts of a shoe. And this include the sole, the insole, the outsole, the midsole, as described here, midsole between, is between the upper and the outsole, the midsole and the heel, and the vamp. The whole of this is the vamp, the vamp, vamp. Six parts. It is observed that a shoe consists of a sole, insole, outsole, midsole, heel, and vamp. The vamp is the upper. The whole of this vamp is the upper, and it protects the foot. Other parts of a shoe are lining, the shoe lining, the tongue, I've, I've shown you the tongue just, just now, I've shown what the tongue is, the, the piece of leather that that protects the foot from injury of the lace. It protects the instep. So you have uh, the tongue. We have the cutter, that is the the back, the rear part, the rear hand of the shoe. The cutter, welt and back stay. I've shown you the back stay that gives your shoe the shape, so that it does not just. Um, the, the back stay here gives the shoe that good uh, shape that you always see it have. And I said, um, these parts are included according to design of the shoes. We have done that. The next item here is for us to talk about standard measure for shoe heel heights. Standard measure for shoe heel heights. Standard measure. For shoe heel heights. And the standard measure for shoe heel heights are as follows. Number one, 
It can be eight inches over eight, eight over eight measure, standard measure. If it is eight over eight standard measure, it is a low heel shoe. That is, the height is one inch. The heel will not be more than one inch, one inch high. That is 2.5 centimeters in height. That is eight over eight. It is also called a low heel shoe, a low heel shoe. The other one is 16 over 8, otherwise known as medium heel shoe, medium heel shoe, and when it is 16 over 8, it is a 2 inches high shoe. It is a 2 inches high shoe. And that means the measurement of the height is 5 centimeters. The third standard measure is 24 over 8. 24 over 8 and these are known as high heel shoes at, as it is 3 inches high or 7.5 centimeters high shoes they are called high heel shoes too and it is 24 over 8 and um, that is to let you know that even the shoes that you are wearing are categorized into low heel medium heel or high heel shoes. So when somebody tells you that it, it, it requires a low heel shoe, he's telling you that the height must not be more than one inch. And when you are told that I require a medium heel shoe, he's telling you that the height of your of this of the heel must not be more than two inches. And high heel shoes, although not very common these days, because I'm not very sure it's common these days. Many, many, the, 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 the highest everybody is putting on these days are maybe medium heel and low heel uh, shoes. Having said that, um, we have talked about standard measure for high heel shoes. Then it is also important and imperative for us to discuss major type of shoe heels, major type of shoe heels, and how they are uh, structured and how they are structured major type of shoe heels and their structures the first one is louis or french shoe heels louis when i say louis l-o-u-i-s louis louis or french shoe heels when we say louis or french shoe heels it features a curved back and it ranges in height from 18 over 8 to 24 over 8 that is from 2 inches to three inches in height. That is, they are from medium to high heel shoes. The next one is Baby Louis. Baby Louis shoe heels. The same shape. They have the same shape as Louis heel, but it is always 12 over 8 or shorter. That is, about one and a half inch high in height another one is the built heel shoes built heel shoes built heel shoes when you say built heel shoes these are these are heels created from layers of leather of or fiber with contrasting tones yes contrasting tones the other one is Continental shoe heels. They are made of a higher heel with little or no curvature and they taper at the bottom. They are usually of medium height, that is 16 over 8. Stagged heels. Stagged heels. Stagged heels. Stacked. S T A C K E D. These are similar to built heel shoes. But typically, they can be created from synthetic and leather materials, often found on spectator shoes. Next one is wedge heel shoes. Wedge, W-E-D-G-E, -E, wedge, the wedge. A heel that is as wide as the shoe itself and follows the shoe's contour from toe to heel. Wedge, heel, shoes having described this 
Um, the next item is for us to look at materials, materials for shoe making and the process. Now, the materials for shoe making include um, leather for upper part, Benver board, you need a Benver board, yes, a Benver board, um, wooden board, or synthetic board, where you can, where you can place your materials, your armor, your chisel, your, um, your chisel, your rivets, and the likes, so you need a board, then you need shaping leather, Shaping leather, yes, you will have cut your leather into different shapes. Those are the ones you are going to use in cutting the new ones. Yeah, you need gum, yes. You need dunlop, that is foam. Yes, you need foam, so that you can, that foam is what we are going to put at the place that is called ball, the soft part, the pushing part in your shoe that allows your, your foot to, you know, to be comfortable. And then, apart from that, um, material for insole you need you need cushion material that is the we have the foam you need um what you can use for trading that the, the trade yes trade and then the sewing machine to to uh fasten your leathers together to, to join leathers you need a buckle um rivets r i v e t s then apart from that you need a wood board fiber board Leather sole, fiber sole, shaping material. Then you need coloring, and you need shiny cream and, and, and polish materials. Yes, those are the materials required in shoe making process. Then um, we quickly go to uh, units of footwear manufacturing. There are four units in footwear manufacturing, and the four units include. Clicking or cutting units, closing units, machining units, and lasting units. Please listen to me. Units of footwear machine manufacturing. In the manufacturing of footwear, four main units are essential. And these are clicking or cutting units. That is the part from where leathers are cut into shapes. Closing material, where they are further processed. And then made the materials are made finer. Machining that this involves the joining together of um, the vamp, the vamp, and the wedge, the back stay, and the toe. And then apart from that, the last there is the lasting, uh, lasting, and making or finishing machine. Um, finishing a uh, unit, the lasting unit, uh, you know, the, the, the shoe last is the material that is used in giving the shoe its shape. The leather is attached to the shoe last, and when it is attached, the, the shoe last is the object that you see in, in a shoemaker's workshop that looks like a shoe. But it's an object, it's been structured, it's been designed like that, it is not a shoe, but it has the shape of a shoe. It's either made of wood or other synthetic materials. The leather is attached to it, and when the leather is placed on it, shoe tacks, tacks are used in attaching the leather to the last to give it the shape. When it is done, it is the, the leather is beating, is beating until it has uh, it has. A, the required shape and when it has the required shape the 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 effect of the tax tax tacks they are like nails they are like nails that is used in attaching leather to shoe last so at that level uh, once the shape has finally been made then the sole is attached the sole is now attached to the leather and and finally when 
and and um, and um, the adhesive, the glue, is attached. So when the shoe final is, is is finally secured, the upper is finally secured to the sole. The last is removed. It's adjustable. It is removed, and you have your shoe made already. The clicking or the cutting unit. In this unit, the top part of the shoe upper is made. I told you. The clicking operative is given skins of leather, mostly cow leather, but not restricted to this type of leather. Using metal strip knives, the worker cuts out pieces of various shapes that will make that will make that will take the form of upper. That is the upper part of the shoe. This operation needs high level of skill, as the expensive leather should not be wasted as much as possible. Leather may also have various defects. On the surface, such as bad wire scratches, which must be avoided because such scratch surfaces are not suitable for uppers. Closing or machining unit. Here, the component pieces are sewn together. I said it the other time. I said closing or machining unit. The the yeah, the component the component pieces. That is the toe, the shoe toe, the vamp, and the rear, the back stay. And the tongue are sewn together by highly skilled machinists so as to produce the completed upper. The work is divided into stages. In early stages, the pieces are sewn together on flat machine. In later stages, when the upper part is no longer flat and has become three-dimensional, the machine called post machine is used. This sewing machine, this sewing surface of the machine is elevated on a post. To enable the operative to sew the three-dimensional upper, various edge treatments are also done onto the leather to give an attractive look to the finished upper. At this stage, only the eyelets, the eyelets, I've told us about the eyelets, and these are the holes, the holes through which this is passed. Only the eyelets. At this stage, only the eyelets are at, at this stage, the eyelets are also inserted to accommodate the laces in the finished shoes, lasting and making units. The completed uppers are molded into a shape or foot with the help of a last. The last is a plastic shape that stimulates the foot shape. I told you the other time I said the last is not a shoe in itself, it's, it's something that has been created or that was been designed to look like a foot and it is on this that the leather is attached you will have been saying it in um, shoemaker's place or cobbler's place it, it is later removed from the finished shoe to be used for that in making of other shoes firstly an insole to the bottom of the last is attached it is only a temporary attachment sometimes Mostly when welted shoes are manufactured, the insole has rib attached to its under edge. Finishing unit and the showroom. The finishing of a shoe depends on the material used for making it. If made of leather, the sole edge of the heel are trimmed and buffed, buffing, B-U-F-F-E-D to give a full, a smooth finish, to give them an attractive finish and to ensure that is finishing unit, please. That's what, the, what we do at the finishing unit. The bottom of the shoe, to give them an attractive finish and to ensure that the edge is waterproof. They are stained, polished and waxed. Yes, to make your shoe waterproof. That is why you wax it. Many of you will say, I want to put polish. That thing is wax. You wax it. You are waxing. And waxed. The bottom of the sole is often lightly buffed, stained, and polished at different times, at different at, and different types of patterns are marked on the surface to give a craft finished look. A finished shoe has now been made. For shoe room operation, an internal sock is fitted into shoe which can be a full length, half or quarter. 
they usually have manufacturer's details or a brand name whenever applicable. Depending on the materials used for the uppers, they are often linked, polished, and sprayed. Laces and any tags that might have to be attached to the shoes, such as shoe care instruction, are also attached. The shoes are then packaged into boxes and displayed in the showroom. Our styles are made. Our styles are made. Our shoe styles are made. A close examination of the shoes worn by people in a large city, and you will notice different styles. Shoe styles that were called Grostek a few seasons ago have comparatively casual today. Pink, green, and blue are among the new colors of materials for footwear in this present in the present modern day some of these some of the styles for coming seasons in shoes are more lavish than hitherto and and shoe styles are actually determined by fashion they are determined by fashion and seasons they are determined by fashion and seasons concept of pattern making what is pattern making pattern making is the process of creating the projects of the shoe upper pattern making is the process of creating the the project of the shoe upper made by various parts of the upper and lining so that this can be caught from leather or another material and then joined together through by sewing to form the desired shoe design. It should be noted that shoe pattern making also extends to other components such as insole, the heel itself, the wedge cover, and other components in case of a particular shoe construction. The patterns are made in one size and they are graded, they are graded to cover the full, they are graded to cover the full size range of shoes to be produced. It is important to say that only the size of every piece vary, while the design will never change. To be a good pattern maker, it is fundamental to understand all the production process of the foot we are making. And a good foot we are maker must have spent adequate time working in every department of the factory. This is just to give a better idea of where problems can be hidden when shoe designs are in production. When the sample patterns are not well done or the grading has not been made properly, the final footwear doesn't fit the last or the shoe machines don't work properly and the shoe doesn't fit the foot. Shoe last. Shoe last. The word last is derived from the old Anglo-Saxon word laist, which means footprint or foot track. Shoe last. We are shoe last. And I said the word last, L-A-S-T, is derived from the ang old Anglo-Saxon word laist l-a-e-s-t which means footprint or foot track the shoe last determines the fit and feel of the shoe as well as wear performance last used to be made of hardwood or in modern days synthetic materials Types of pattern making. Types of pattern 
making. Pattern making are of two distinct types. Pattern making are of two distinct types. And this includes manual pattern making and computer aided pattern making. Manual pattern making and computer aided pattern making. For manual pattern making, it is it is done manually as handicraft and craft and craft is the major system used in manual pattern making. However, computer aided pattern making involves the use of digitizing of patterns and cut. Also, it also in includes digitizing of the standard style lines and digitizing of the last flattening and standard making. Leather and shoe making terminologies. Leather leather and shoe making terminologies leather and shoe making terminologies number one aglet 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 it is a plastic sheet plastic sheet mention it to you there at time this plastic it is a plastic sheet at the end of a shoelace at the end this is the shoelace this is the shoelace so this plastic sheet, plastic sheet at the end of the shoelace, which makes lace easier to go through the eyelets of a shoe. These are the eyelets, eyelets, eyelets of a shoe. The holes through which your laces pass through is called eyelets, eyelets, eyelets. The next one is ankle strap, ankle strap. This is a strap attached at the rear of the shoe that encircles the ankle. Incidentally, this, this does not have ankle strap. Then you have ankle wrap. These are straps that are meant to be wrapped around and tied around the ankle for a stylish asset. There's ankle, ankle boot. This footwear that covers the whole foot and ankle. Apron toe, a type of toe characterized by a large overlay that covers the front of the toe and have visible edges for stitches. You can see the stitches there. This is the toe. This is the shoe toe. Shoe toe. Shoe toe. Then, having said that, um, assembling. What is assembling? Assembling. This includes the following operations. Tapping. You tack. Assembling involves tacking the insole to the last, putting putting in the box and counter of the shoe, and putting the upper of the shoe on the last. That is assembling. This is the upper. When you put the upper on the last, before you put the sole, you have done what is called assembling. The next one is back seam. This is the vertical seam. At the back of the shoe or boot, vertical, vertical. This is the vertical, vertical. You can see it here. I'm touching, I'm touching. You can see the little piece of leather there to cover where both right and left side of the van joint is, is there. That's the that's the thing. That, then the ball, the padded area of the foot between the big toe and the arc. See the ball. The padded area of the foot is always in in the shoe. When you see your shoe, there's the midpoint is always padded. You will see where there's the pad. It's, it's, when you touch it, it will be, you know, um, it will be going down and coming up. You know, bouncing, bouncing. Your hand will be bouncing on it. That's where you have um, the the ball. Then the back stay, a tan, used to denote a strip of leather, covering and strengthening the back seam of a shoe. Back seam. I told you that the back seam is covered by this, by this. So as the back stay, 
covering the back seam, covering the back seam. The next one is back strap, the strap by which is pulled on the foot. The strap by which the foot, uh, the, the, the shoe is pulled on the foot. The next one is beading, beading. <coughs> Excuse me. Beading is folding the edges of the upper leather instead of leaving them raw. These are the edges of the upper leather, edges. They have been folded and sewed to give it a very fine look, okay? And that aspect is called beading. The next one is beating out. This is this this is same as leveling. Leveling. You can see this leather. Okay? It's smooth all around. It's level. It's not as if there are bumps. It's not it's not as if one part is swollen or one part is high, one part is, is low. No, 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 no. It's it's beating out. The the leather uh, has been the, the leather has been um, beat out to the extent that it's level. It's very level. Then the other one is belting. This time applied to usual back tanned cowhide. Yes, this is cowhide. Hide from cow. Used in various thickness, thicknesses for machinery belt. Then the other one is bellows tongue. A shoe tongue that is attached at both the toe and the sides of the shoe. This is the tongue. This is the tongue. This is the tongue. This is the tongue. You can see the tongue protruding out. That is the tongue. The next one is binding. Binding is this. This is the strip sewn over or along an edge for this reinforcement or decoration. Decoration. Okay, this shoe hasn't got that. Another one is black ball. Black ball. A mass of grease and lamp black, formerly used by shoemakers on edge of heels and shoes, sometimes called cobbler's botch. Another terminology that is here is brand knock device. This is a device used to measure the length and width of the foot in order to ensure proper shoe fit. Brand knock device. The other, another one is brick. Break the natural crease created across the vamp of the shoe from everyday wear. Don't forget we are on terminologies, terminologies in leather and shoe making. Another one is buckle, a clasp, clasp at the end of a length of fabric or leather that joins one end of the material to the other. Apart from this, another one is another one is blocking. What is blocking? Blocking. This is the cutting or chopping of a sole in such a form or shape that it can be rounded. It might interest you, class, to know that um, shoe and sandal making process has a lot of terminologies and then we'll go through all of them and then another one here is boxing this is a term used to designate the stiffening material placed in the toe of a shoe to support it and retain the shape such as leather composition of leather and paper a cotton fabric stiffened with shellac etc you can see the toe of this shoe. It has been reinforced. It's been boxed. It has been boxed. You can see the leather here. But this part is tough. It's hardened. It's been boxed. The next one is brushing. Brushing. The final finish of the top edge heel and bottom by means of a brush. Brushing is the final finish of the top edge heel and bottom of a shoe by means of a brush. Burnish, B-U-R-N-I-S-H. This is the press of buffing a shoe. This is the press of buffing a shoe surface to, to achieve 
anti-coin effect of the leather. You see, many of you when you when you put wax on your shoe and then you start applying your brush, you say you are polishing. You're not polishing, you are buffing, you are burnishing, you burnish shoes. Shoes are burnished, not polished. Shoes are burnished. Well that 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 action that takes place after you put wax on your shoe and you want it to attain shiny color and you are using your brush on it or foam on it it's called burnishing not punishing burnish you burnish your shoe b-u-r-n-i-s-h burnishing now apart from that we go on to column heel column heel column heel we go to column heel or just column heel a type of women's eye heel that's rounded and column shaped. Counter is another one. Counter, a stiff piece of material placed at the heel of a shoe between the lining and upper in order to retain the shape of the shoe. Then we quickly go to another one that is called curing. Cure to cure. C U R I N G. Curing. Curing is the application of chemicals to animal hides. Animal hides, you know, we are using hides. The skin of cattle, of um, horse, of horse or moon, or camel, are all hides. So the application of chemicals to animal hides in preparation for tanning process is called curing. The next one is cushioning, cushioning, cushioning to cushion. And this is the padding of the insole or outsole of a shoe for added comfort and stability. I've said it the other time. I said the part that you see in your shoe that has pad that is cushioned, that when you are touching is bouncing, okay, is to give comfort and stability and that is called cushioning the next one is channel what is a channel a channel is a groove that is caught in the leather to protect a row of stitches that are laid at the bottom of the groove a groove a channel is a groove that is caught in the leather to protect to protect a row of stitches yes it is to protect a row of stitches that are laid at the bottom of the groove. The next one is clog, C-L-O-G. It is a wooden sole shoe with up with leather upper, commonly walk, commonly worn as work boots, but are but are now also worn over a lighter shoe. As a type of pattern in particularly muddy or dangerous places they could be made entirely out of wood with a carved out inside for food cobbler cobbler definition cobbler this is a shoe repairer forbidden by English law from working with new leather and this is enforced by the guilds. Do not call a shoemaker a cobbler. A cobbler is a repairer, not a shoemaker. Called wainers. Wainers. This is a shoe. This is a shoemaker. The word is derived from Cordovan or Cordovan leather. A type of specific durable leather named after a city in Spain from where it was exported. It is commonly a deep reddish color leather and it is used today to describe that color. Dressing. What is dressing? The application of polish or gloss to a shoe to maintain its finish and appearance. 
Next one, elast elastic go. An elastic fabric panel inserted into shoes to prove stretch, to provide stretch. Another one, highlights or an eyelet. It is a hole through which a lace thread, through which a lace is threaded. It is fastener consisting of a metal ring for lining or a small hole to permit the attachment of cords or lines or laces. Highlighting. Highlighting. E Y E L E T I N G. This is the operation where eyelets are attached to the upper. The machine punches and spaces the lacing holes, feeds and sets the eyelets in proper alignment. Fair stitch. Another definition. This is the stitching of the world to the midsole. Finish. This, in, this is the process by which the final appearance of a shoe is created. The finish can include the application of polish to create a high gloss finish or a contrasting polish to create a rub off finish like antique coin. Flat heel. These are shoes with very low or no heel height. Foam. This is a lightweight material in cellular form made by introducing gas bubbles during manufacture. Four foot. Four foot. Four foot is the area of foot between the ball and the toes. Gat. G-I-R-T-H. This is the circumference of a shoe last as measured around the ball of the foot. Go. G-O-R-E. This is an elastic panel stitched to either side of the shoe vamp in order to make it more comfortable and easier to put on and take off. Heel counter. Counters provide support and help the upper wrap around the foot. They also help protect the heel from impact. Heel breast. The forward facing, the forward facing side of the heel is called heel breast. Heel height. Heel height is measured on a vertical line at the breast of the heel from the bottom surface of the sole where it meets the heel to the floor. Heel seat. This is the part of shoe directly below where the heel of the foot rests. Heel cap. This is the material covering the heel of a boot or shoe and reinforcing or decorating it. Hidden go. This is an elastic panel at the front of a shoe that is covered by the shoe's tongue. Injection molded construction. Injection molded construction. This is a type of sole unit construction created by injecting melted PVC or similar material into the sole mold. Injection molded construction is an efficient way to mass produce footwear. In seaming. In seaming. I N iPhone S E A M I N G. This is the stitching together of the web, upper, lining, and insole with a heavy durable thread. Insole rib. The part of the insole that is used when stitching a good year weld. In step. In step. This is the area of the foot between the toes and the ankle or the top of the front part of a shoe. Last. Last. L-A-S-T. A metal, wood, or plastic form used to create the shape of a shoe. Lasting. This is the process of pulling and shaping. This is the process of pulling and shaping a shoe on a last. This can be done by pulling and tacking the upper to the last or by string lasting. Lift. This is a device worn in a shoe or boot to make the wearer look taller or to correct a shortened leg. Lining. The material inside the shoe, literally 
literally the lining on the inside of the shoe or boots leather liners are extremely durable and colorful to wear but take longer to dry mid sole the part of the sole between the very bottom and where the foot rests the mid sole is a cushioning layer between the outsole and the upper mool mool m u l e a, a backless slip on worn by both genders but common today in women's section of shoe store negative ear this is popular in comfort footwear a type of footbed with a lowered heel area designed for more natural foot placement outsole the very bottom of the sole the part that contacts the ground overlay material detailing on a shoe made by layering material on top of overlay detailing on a, on a shoe made by layering material on top of other material pattern a protective wooden platform strapped strapped to the foot to raise a walker out of the mud or at least to provide traction shoe box there is an oblong rectangular usually cardboard made box designed to hold a pair of shoes silicon a slippery polymeric material used to waterproof shoes skin this is the layer of tissue that forms the natural outer covering of an animal skiving skiving this is a trimming process used to reduce the thickness of edges of the upper parts prior to joining them together the skiving machine cuts a bevel at the edge of the material on the underside as the operator guides the material past a rapidly rotating razor sharp knife string lasting string lasting this is the process of sewing a string or tape to the lower edge of the upper so what so of the upper so on the up so once the upper is placed on the last the string can be pulled tight thus helping to form the upper to the last prior to bottoming operations so the bottom layers of the sole usually broken down into layer in sole mid sole and out sole that is the sole tassel Tassel is a rope and not ornament, found on the van of a loafer or moccasin. Throat. The main opening of a shoe extending from the van to the ankle. T. An additional T. An additional piece of leather covering toe of a shoe which may be in several different shapes or patterns. It is also known as a cap, toe cap. This is the material covering the toe of a boot or shoe and reinforcing or decorating it. Tray describes the design of a shoe sole. Unit bottom. This is a single shoe bottom made from a mold of rubber or plastic. It includes sole, platform, heel, or wedge. Upper. Upper is the part of a shoe that covers the top part of the foot from heel to toe. Peg. Peg. A peg is a wooden stick driven into a heel to bind and stabilize the stacked or laminated leather. Pump. A pump. This is a light torn shoe with a thin sole meant for wearing mostly indoors. It is worn by both genders. But survives today in the women's section of shoe store. Perforation. This is a pattern of small holes punched or bored into the trim of a shoe for the purpose of decoration or ventilation. Pinked decoration. This detail characterized. characterized this is a detailed character. This, this is detailing character, character, characterized by a sawtooth edge applied decoration paint piping 
a decorative narrow strip of leather or synthetic that follows the seam of a shoe. Pitch, the angle, the angle of the back of the heel where it meets the sole. Pitch, compared to the front part of the heel where it meets the sole. Quarter panel, the side of the shoe from the heel to the toe. Quarter lining, the lining of the rear part of the typically made from leather or fabric. Quarter, the size of the shoe extending around the back. I've showed you the other time, the quarter here. That's the quarter. That's the quarter. Rand. Rand is a thin rubber binding that runs around the junction of the upper and so part way up the, 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 the boot, the rim. This is the part of the shoe where the foot enters. This is another term for collar or top line. This is, the, this is your shoe rim. This place. This is the shoe rim. Shoe rim. That's the shoe rim. You can see? Your, your foot enters through this place. It enters through the rim. Are, are, are they here with me? Now, having said that, I have this sculpted heel. A type of heel molded in one piece, usually out of higher impact plastic. Shaft height. This is the measurement of the shaft of the boot. Measurement is from the inside seam where instep and sole meet to the top of the boot. Shoe sizes. The variation between full sizes is one third of an inch, while the difference between half size and full size is one sixth of an inch. Shoe lace. This is a string or rope used for fastening. Shoe lace. Shoe lace. Shoe lace. Vamp. This is a piece of leather forming the front part of the upper of the shoe. This is the vamp. I've told you, the vamp, if you remove, if you remove the wedge, or if you remove this, this is the vamp. The vamp. Vamp. Vinyl. Short. is the short form of polyvinyl chloride, PVC, used is used as a shiny plastic often used for coating shoes. Vulcanizing, the process where thermoplastic or rubber sole is joined to upper using heat. Welt, a strip of leather sewn between the insole and the outsole to create, to create greater durability. Wedge heel, a heel which extends from the back of the sole to the ball of the shoe, following its contour, welt beating. This is the flattening out of the welt, making it smooth. Wooden case, a large box for 12 or more pairs of shoes in a showroom. Um, students, it's been a wonderful session with you, and I want to say that. Um, you are going to have me here one more time after others might have taken their time to take you through. And, um, and that is when I'll be talking to you about your practicals as um, we will be starting the practical immediately um, you resume um, the physical classes after the first five weeks that the university asked us for these um, virtual classes. I, I look forward to seeing you and I must also remind you that um, we expect that um, the grading system, that the practical, uh, the practical is uh, 60 marks, while the theory is 40 marks, and the students must attend the practical class, and the students will be taking real practicals on sandal making, tar and dye, pigry, sheep and goat entrepreneurship skills, and that our students, you are expected to be directly in instructed by artisans under the supervision of technical staff of the Directorate of General Nigerian Studies. And that this, this course, as I said earlier on, is a two unit course, but it is a university required course that has to be passed. And I said for this 2022 2023 session, our practical materials for each faculty is as follows. Faculty of Arts, Education, Science, Law, 
administration and management sciences and social sciences will be involved in sandal production. Once again, faculties of arts, education, science, law, administration and management sciences, as well as social sciences will be involved in sandal and leather slippers production. Faculties of pharmacy, basic medical sciences, clinical sciences, agricultural and college of agricultural sciences Ayeto will be involved in Adire tie and dye production, while College of Engineering and Environmental Sciences Ibugun students will produce electrical sockets. For, for students of College of Electric, uh, Engineering Ibugun, Engineer Adetifa will readily handle you and take charge. For those of them at um, Shagamu campus, having pharmacy, BMS, clinical sciences, um, Dr. Mrs. Shoinka will be in charge. And then for those of them in faculties of arts, education, science, law, administration and management sciences and SOS, uh, myself, Bada Abayomi, um, Ajasa, Abiola, Daniel um, Afalabi, and uh, Mrs. Owulabi will all be involved. I thank you for your attention, and I thank you for listening. God bless you. Um, by this time next week, um, Another person will be here to take you another enterprise in introduction to Nigeria, in introduction to entrepreneurship skills. God bless you all and thank you.